Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the York series. Sitting within North Yorkshire, York is a very historic place with 31 civil parishes within its city boundaries. Here's one of them for your enjoyment. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to York. Now, today I'm beginning on a parish boundary, and this area is going to seem very familiar to you over these next two episodes because I'm doing two in one today. I couldn't have asked for a better parking space. I'm literally stood on the boundary between these two, and my car is parked just there, as you can see. The sun's kind of there we are. <laughs> the sun's kind of in my eyes. Couldn't really see what I was doing there. Anyway, so basically I'm going to walk around the first one, come back to this point and then walk around the second one. We're taking on Rawcliffe first. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. For the second time on the channel and for the second time in Yorkshire, we're in a place called Rawcliffe. Last time we were on the banks of the River Eyre near Goul, this time we're alongside the Ouse in York. The two settlements couldn't be any more different. Whilst the East Riding's version was truly a village, York's is much more of a suburb. It lies on the A19, a couple of miles northwest of the city centre, between Skelton and Clifton Without. Prior to 1996, it was part of Rydale. The area is mainly residential, but it's known for its wildlife reservations that border the Ouse. These include Clifton Ings, which is currently undergoing some flood alleviation work. A lot of the suburban housing you'll find here is built on what was the former RAF Clifton. The airfield went by a few different names, including Clifton Aerodrome, Clifton Airfield, RAF York, and even RAF Rawcliffe. The airfield's history goes back to 1936, when it was opened as a civilian airport. During World War II, it was used by No. 4 Squadron, who operated Westland Lysander aircraft. There's virtually nothing left of the base now, but you will find a tiny handful of locations dotted around which make a reference to it. There's more about the airbase coming at you in next week's episode. This one will focus primarily on what's here today, and let me tell you, there's quite a bit. And it's all located around the massive Rawcliffe Lake. So there's plenty to talk about here in Rawcliffe. Let's get on with it. Let's go for a walk. It's a lengthy route this one. Rawcliffe is less of a village and much more of a suburb. As such, there's a lot of residential areas in this episode. We begin on Lanshaw Croft. It's not all housing though. If you know where to go, there are some interesting and pretty bits in Rawcliffe. Rawcliffe Lake ticks both of those boxes simultaneously. Located in the southeastern corner of the parish boundaries, Rawcliffe Lake covers a massive seven acres. It's a man-made lake and was constructed in the 1980s as part of the redevelopment of the area around Clifton Moor and the former RAF Clifton. It's a balancing lake designed primarily to prevent flooding. However, it has some benefits for the local bird life. Interestingly, it's one of the few sites in the UK that's a perfect breeding ground for the great crested grebe. There's a path that runs all the way around it and just off that path in the lake's northwestern corner, you can access Rawcliffe Recreation Ground. We'll see this again later. 
I'll tell you something, it hasn't taken long this morning for that sun to get up. It's starting to get quite warm now. So when I do the second one of these two, you might find I'm not wearing this fleece. It was too cold to start without it, but now it's starting to get a little bit warm. Anyway, our next landmark, as you can see behind me, is a building that has a cross in front of it, literally just there. So this then is some kind of religious building. Not your average parish church, this is St Mark's. It serves both Rawcliffe and neighbouring Clifton without. A modern church, it was built in 1968 as a centre for what was at that time a newly developing residential area. It remains an important community building today. Its interior was completely refurbished in 2005 and 2006. It's used extensively during the week and services are held on Sundays. There's another church here and we'll get to that later. A left turn just after the church sees us cross a small stream on East Home Drive. This is the road where we come across one of Rawcliffe's two schools. That would be Clifton with Rawcliffe Primary, which opened in 2011, following an amalgamation of the local junior and infant schools. Right outside this there's a parish notice board, one of several dotted along this route actually, and that's Rawcliffe in the books. There's ten to go in York. Now once you get past the school, if you continue south, you're heading into Clifton without. But to stay within Rawcliffe, which is what we want, we need to turn around at the school and take a left turn down West Home Drive. After walking through some residential streets, we find ourselves on the A19. If you were to follow this to the south, you'd end up in York City Centre. However, we're crossing the road towards Clifton Ings. Now, the original plan here was to walk through the Ings and go along the Ouse for a short way. However, at the moment, that's not possible thanks to the Clifton Ings Flood Alleviation Scheme. The £21 million scheme, which began last year, is a series of flood defences that will stop the ooze from spilling onto Shipton Road. It'll also protect 135 houses and also these allotments. I'm sure the fans will be happy about that. So with the change of route enforced, I walked up the A19 where I found this pumping station and also a row of shops, which otherwise would have been missed out. These include a Chinese takeaway, a tile shop, and also a local garage. At the end of the row, there's a pub too. And right next to that row of shops, you find one of Rawcliffe's pubs. This is the Mitre. Might be a bit difficult to see it because the sun's kind of very bright behind it, but there it is, the Mitre. An ideal name for a place in York, considering it's uh, bishop, bishopness, shall we say? A mitre is, of course, the name of the hats that bishops wear. Okay, now we are going to turn around and go back over the road. My idea was to stay on that side of the road all the way up, but I ran out of footpath. We're heading for a country park next. This is Rawcliffe Bar Country Park. It's a vast open space which adjoins Clifton Ings alongside the Ewes. Had my route have gone to plan, I'd have emerged here from the Ings. Children love this park. In the playground here is a three meter high climbing boulder with more than 60 square meters of climbing features. When the park was first established, more than 2000 trees and 1500 woodland shrubs were planted by York City Council. It's still a work in progress, but despite that, the park has still won the Green Flag Award every year since 2009. It all sits next to Rawcliffe Bar Park and Ride, another of the eight park and ride sites around the city. York Hospital can be reached from this one, but this one is served mainly by the number 2 and the 2A. Right on cue, one of them came past me as I was about to leave. Fun little area, all in all. Okay, and once back to the A19, we're now heading along this road here in a moment to head back towards the start. Just before we do though, I want to show you the village sign that you would have seen at the beginning of this video. Right next to it, 
you can see there's a memorial with a poppy wreath underneath it and some um, planes. Now, there's a plaque here which tells you all about this. I have to get right in close to this because it's really small, difficult to read. The weather vane centered within the teardrop turret is a lasting tribute to all of those Army, RAF and Airfield staff that served or flew from the former nearby Clifton Airfield. As you can see, it is indeed a weather vane. Northeast, southwest, or never eat shredded wheat, <laughs> is how we used to say at school. Considering that we, uh, I went to school in Gainsborough, there were a lot of Sheffield Wednesday fans, so some people said never ever support Wednesday. <laughs> you know, I'm not a blade before anyone says anything, I just don't like Wednesday. Right, okay, <laughs> let's, move, let's move on down Manor Lane. Manor Lane takes us along what is almost the northernmost edge of Rawcliffe's housing estate. This is the area that has most of the newest properties. There's a lot of flats here, broken up by green areas such as this playground off Armstrong Way. Rawcliffe Manor is the name given to the local care home. Branding itself as a luxury care home, Rawcliffe Manor, seen here, is operated by Your Care. It has 67 bedrooms and provides residential, dementia and respite care. On the other side of it is another pub. This is the Lysander Arms, named after the aircraft that was used by Number 4 Squadron at Clifton Aerodrome. The Lysanders were employed in cooperation with ground forces to carry out reconnaissance work. As well as artillery spotting, in case of invasion, they were used to drop mustard gas. It's a nice pub, and you can stay here too. It has a touring caravan park with 13 pitches within its grounds. Okay, now we're on Village Street, and behind me we've got the Reading Room, which has got a, a George V post box in its wall. But this is definitely not the original Village Reading Room, and I can tell you why, because if you look above its top windows, you'll see a date stone that says 2009. So I reckon that's been rebuilt at some point. There's a few bits of note on Village Street. This small industrial area is one, which has another garage as well as a sign makers and an engravers. Village Street is a dead end. The last house on the street, the yellowish coloured effort seen here, is Manor Cottage. It's not a listed building, but it's still a nice one. The path at the end of the road brings you onto what is effectively Rawcliffe's Village Green. This features an iron beacon which was erected in 2018 to mark 100 years since the end of World War I. All of this is right next to the Rawcliffe Recreation Hall, better known to the locals as the Pavilion. The Recreation Association was founded in 1979 on a six acre field, which would eventually become the playing field that we encountered earlier. It's developed a bit more since then, and I've linked the history of this area below. From here, we can take a shortcut through some more housing estates to our last area using handy little footpaths. And those handy little shortcuts have brought us back almost to the beginning. There's one more section to go and then we'll make for the car and finally I can take this off. I'm starting to sweat quite badly now. Here's another playground on Landale Wood Road. This last section focuses mainly on Oakdale Road, which runs back to the beginning. At its junction with Rivlin Way is Rawcliffe's other church, Clifton Moor Church and Community Centre. The younger of the two religious buildings here, this opened in September 1998. York City Council gave the land on which it stands, whilst the church funded its own construction. Moving on, we're back to the housing estates briefly as we make for another school. That would be Lakeside Primary School, which as you may have guessed, takes its name from Rawcliffe Lake. This was in the local news recently. A group of children from here were highlighted last year for their efforts in cleaning up York's Millennium Mileposts, the stylish cast iron direction signs on the National Cycle Network. And finally, a few paces away from the school, we pass another pumping station. Even this has links to the RAF history because it's named Clifton Airfield. 
In the southwestern corner of Rawcliffe's boundaries, there's a hospital. Clifton Park is a brand new facility which opened in 2006. It's a private hospital which the Care Quality Commission rates as good. The site on which it stands, however, has a backstory. In the 1800s, a mental hospital designed by George Gilbert Scott and William Bonithan Moffat stood where the modern hospital is today. It opened as the North and East Riding's Pauper Lunatic Asylum in April 1847. It was then extended in stages during the 19th century. It became the North Riding Lunatic Asylum in 1865 and the North Riding Mental Hospital in 1920 before joining the NHS. In much the same way as Neyburn, it went into decline in the 1980s and it closed in 1994. The main building was demolished, but there is a surviving part. That would be this, which is the hospital's original chapel. And there you go, we are all the way around Rawcliffe and I'm back to the car finally, which means I can take this off. But the car's not going to move because in this next episode I'm going to start from here as well and uh, take on the next one just to the south of Rawcliffe. It's good when I can do them like this, I don't have to move the car, it saves petrol. Anyway, that's been the parish of Rawcliffe here in York and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.